One of the most entertaining and electrifying humans of all time. One of the greatest hockey players ever. Hell yeah. Oh, sure. People aren't ever going to say that about him in the hockey world. Why? Because he wasn't Wayno? Yeah. Because he wasn't Sidney Crosby? Ooh, okay. He was a pro for 30 years. Yeah. Had a little bit of respect, ladies and gentlemen, from TNT and the Spittin' Chicklets podcast brought to you by Barstool Sports. Biz Nasty, Paul Bizonette. Yes! What's up, buddy? Great to see you. Hey, best grocery stick of all time. Oh, is that right? Is that the is that yeah. the proper title? Yeah, it's the the guy who used to separate the D and the forwards on the bench and just kind of sit there and make sure he <laughs> manned the gate the entire game. So that's what I'm labeled as the greatest grocery stick of all time. God, you were so good though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, filthy. Can you think about the vibes, at, the vibes that you're bringing to both sides. I mean the you know, the the glue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah glue. that's the actual glue. The glue. Yeah. You're the greatest the glue. glue in the history of a hockey bench. <laughs> okay, wow, oh, gorilla okay. glue. That's what I heard. Glue guy. Yeah, gorilla glue. Yeah, that's what we like to talk about. I saw you get a little bit emotional the other night. Let's dive right into it. This didn't feel yeah. like something that was, you know, known by a lot of people uh, as it was happening, and then it gets dropped overnight. It had been rumored and lingered about potentially Utah getting involved with an NHL team. And when Ryan Smith was out here, he was like, there is a lot that has to happen before that. Didn't know if it was going to be expansion, like when's the next time they expand, because NHL expansion always does well seemingly for the team and the city with the way they set it up with the draft and everything. This is just an outright purchase. See you later. You're out of town. Emotional last evening, obviously, we watched with the ticketing and sales and coaches and players and everything like that. But alumni, I assume, how are you feeling with the relocation of the Phoenix Coyotes? And what does this mean for the future of the NHL, you think? How, how does this work out? Uh, it brutal for, for Phoenix and Arizona area for all talkie fans. You know, I've been there for, for a long time and, and not only on the playing side, but the media side. So to say that it kind of happened overnight, uh, I guess that would be a, a, a true statement in the sense that I didn't think it was going to happen this soon. I think that people were aware that at the deadline this summer, if they weren't going to win the land auction as far as building a new arena, it just wasn't going to be sustainable in playing out of the mullet uh, in Tempe, which is a, 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 it's a, it's a college rink, right? There's 5,000 people. So um, as far as it going to Ryan Smith, I think he's going to be an incredible owner. Um, I think the reason it was kept hush-hush is Gary doesn't really like a lot of this stuff uh, becoming public knowledge. He wants it all under wraps, all controlled until eventually a decision is going to be going to be made. So um, Ryan Smith, obviously uh, the classy guy that he is, wasn't speaking very publicly about this, but ultimately wanted to bring a team to Utah. He's an incredible sports owner in the NBA, and I think he's got a lot of bright, amazing ideas and how to also grow it from a hockey community sense. And uh, I know people are maybe a little bit critical of the size of the market, and everybody gets very uh, numbers uh, focused when it comes to markets, but I think he's insured us, and at, even even with the amount of season tickets already sold, or people with the deposits down, ensures that there is going to be local support there. But just going back to to the Coyote situation, it just sucks because of all the amazing people that I got to be around and work with there. Uh, I do feel like they were blindsided in how soon this happened. Not saying they're aware that there was potential that it was going to happen, but but uh, I do hope that they do eventually get a team back because I do think that hockey will work in the desert. I don't know if it'll work with the former owners that have just now moved the team and still kind of hold the rights if they want to bring one back. Yeah, that's what I saw. Five years they have, uh, and I believe... The statement said, we are committed to this community and to building a first-class sports arena and entertainment district without seeking financial support from the public. Hadn't that been what ever, the NHL and everybody's been looking for for like five, ten years seemingly? End up in kind of the thing. So how much longer, what is it? Because the quote, I think I saw the tweet, the narrative uh, being sent before or above the actual quote was like, owner is committed to bringing team back. It's like, and then you read it, it's like, what? Where was this for like the last five, six years? You know, yeah. isn't this like a, too little, too late? And this guy, then five years, he's the one that he's the only one that can get a team back in there, or can some biz nasty team up with some VC firm <laughs> and be able to buy those? Like, how does that work? Legit, because what I've learned, I better be starting to sell a little bit more vodka if I want to think about purchasing, <laughs> yeah. purchasing a sports team. A big um, Whitney's for I, sure. Yeah, I, I truly believe that he wants to bring a team back, and I think that he wanted to make it work. When he uh, purchased the team, I think he did so for about, let's say, $300 million in that range, right? So a great bargain. Um, 
I don't think it was going to work in Glendale. The commute's too much. Uh, people in that area maybe don't have the disposable income that people, let's say, in North Scottsdale and Tempe and other areas of Arizona. PV, so, oh, of course. What's that? Paradise Valley, I think is that what it's called? PV? Is yeah, it the- PV. Yeah, PV's, PV's beautiful. But, like, yeah, so that, that whole area, anything close to that, people have the money in order to have disposable income to go watch sports. Now, um, as far as the arena lease in Glendale, it just wasn't working out, so they decided to move over to Tempe for the short period of time. Now, I think that when they were trying to secure the other land there they uh, in Tempe to eventually build this this whole project that they had planned, they thought that they were going to re- win the votes outright, but people in the city were pushing back on it. They put like a you know, they, they they put their forces behind it to basically say, we don't want this here. We don't want you to use taxpayers' dollars in order to build it. Even though that I believe that that wasn't the case and a lot of it was going to be funded by Morello, um, they completely, like, they didn't go into the, the, the situation being serious about it. They didn't spend enough money to advertise at the fact that what they actually wanted to do. So not taking it seriously, they, they ended up voting against it. So all of a sudden they try to shift to buying land in North Scottsdale. It's getting jammed up. And on top of all that, with the business dealings that have been going around in the area and the word that has gotten around about this ownership group, there's a lack of trust that they'll even execute it and get it done. Mm, now, mm. you can make of that what you will, but from per- I've never been personally wronged by the, by the Merlos. I've, I worked for the team and then slowly didn't because of certain reasons and talking to people that I trust in the organization at the fact that bills were sometimes going unpaid, uh, like they had issues with uh, uh, hotel bills when they were going on the road that hadn't been paid for a while where the league had to step in. In the NHL? So just, just, just really petty stuff, exactly, to where it's like, how is somebody going to take – how are you going to take somebody seriously who's doing things like that and then dragging out bill process then af- offering, you know, three quarters or half of what the amount was agreed upon originally. So, like I said, the trust has slowly been lost where now all of a sudden it got to a situation where they're saying, this isn't going to get done anytime soon. Let's do what's right for the league. Let's get an NHL team to where people are going to want it with an owner who's going to be incredible and support and, and get fan support get that figured out and then still give this guy the opportunity in five years to eventually potentially execute this. But I personally believe, and Pat, you know, as much as any way, anyone, excuse me, the sports business is about the people. If you're in it to like make money in which you probably will eventually, if that's your main goal, I don't think it's going to end up working in the end. So they need to completely repair their image in that community if they have any hopes of actually executing this in the next five years, that's my personal opinion. Well, thank you very much for clarifying mm-hmm. all that. Yes. I mean, the bills unpaid, that sounds like USFL stuff. Yeah, yeah. bingo. You know, like that, that, like hotel, like that's amateur stuff. And I assume the league office was like, this is not what our league is, you know. But now let's talk about hockey community a little bit. How do they feel about this? Are they pumped? Because like Ryan Smith, we've only, I mean, I feel like we know him pretty good. I feel like we've for hung sure. out with him numerous times. We know him pretty well. He's gonna inv- like he is gonna go all in here. He is gonna spend and he is gonna commit and he's gonna hire and he's gonna. He's one of those like he's a psycho. This yeah. guy mm-hmm. is a business psycho. You know, like that, he's built that, different. Yeah, he's built different. Like he's gonna go. That is what he's gonna do. All the while trying to make it the best. Is the hockey community happy about the move to Utah? Is the hockey community as a whole? I, I mean, I don't know. Obviously, the people in Phoenix that just lost their jobs aren't gonna be the necessarily the most pumped people. I don't think they're mad at Ryan Smith, but the whole situation. But hockey community as a whole, are we happy about the move to Utah and the energy and the freshness for hockey? Yeah, I mean, personally, I just want strong ownership. I think it's been mixed opinions online for the one that I said earlier and the fact people maybe doubt it based on the number and the population there. Um, Ryan Smith will ensure you that it's about the support. It has nothing to do with the overall number. And he even said, uh, I believe that they draw a little bit better in Utah, even from the NBA perspective, than they do in uh, with the Phoenix Suns. So even that will tell you, and I don't know where they are exactly in the standings, but with good support and him wanting to put his own money and resources into building that new arena and new area, I think that they're going to get tons of fan support, and I think it's going to be a first-class organization with a lot of uh, forward thinking. 
Like this guy is is ten steps ahead of the next guy. He's just he's a he's a brilliant he's a brilliant mind, and the fact that he's going to have both teams there out of the same building, I do think it's going to have that community support, and I think it is going to be successful. Uh, the only thing they got to worry about is naming the team. Yeah. Playoffs have been set. Who do you like here? Who do we like? Are the Bruins going to do it? Are the Bruins going to be able to maybe win one here? No, they're going to get smoked by the Leafs. My, my Toronto Maple Leafs. It's Leafs. their year. Okay. It's their year. They're gonna okay. they're gonna go on a bit of a heater and they're gonna biz, break. The- oh, Biz! Don't be a mark, Biz! Don't, do don't, this, be a, biz. don't be a mark right, who, now. Okay, we got Boston Connor over there. <laughs> I you know, mean, the Biz. Jock sniffer for the bees. No! <laughs> biz, Biz. When was the last time the Maple Leafs beat the Bruins in a playoff series? Tell the people. Uh, I don't think it's been since like the fifties or sixties. Yeah, bingo. So what are you doing, bumping your gums about that <laughs> shitty team in Toronto beating the Boston Bruins? Don't be an asshole, okay? Well, we keep talking about being built different. I think they went and stocked up on some some heavy, heavy bodies. They got the skill. It's all going to be about yeah. producing through the pressure oh. and through the punishment of the Boston Bruins. And you saw the last game. Even though the regular season didn't go well for the Toronto Maple Leafs against the Boston Bruins, yeah. it will go mighty fine come playoff time. We're going to reverse the curse here which is the Boston Bruins. In no world that is happening, my friend. You saw what happened when Toronto played Boston, what Marshy said. Oh, I'm f- coming for all of you. I'm coming for all I'm taking all your heads off. You remember that, bitch? He's a killer. He's Mark a killer. He's a killer. Dude. You don't have any of those. And by the way, you're talking about big guys? Do you guys have the biggest son of a bitch in the NHL, the big rig Pat Maroon? Ooh. No, you don't. The Bruins do. So Ooh. Austin Matthews, 70 goals. <laughs> you cute. What's he going to do when the big rigs mitts are in his grill, biz? Huh? Then what? <laughs> you... You you think Patty Maroon's gonna shimmy shake Ryan Reese? <laughs> yeah, I do. I a thousand percent do. The big rig smoke. Oh, He's yeah. like want, Mike Tyson. I want what you're smoking. <laughs> no, no, what no, you're I'm not, smoking, I'm not buddy. smoking anything except for the Stanley Cup in <laughs> two. Bitch. How about that, man? And Stanley's Cup too, maybe. The, uh, the whole thought, the whole thought <laughs> of you cutting a promo at the edge of this stage with that wide shot, though. I mean, it was that was yeah. one of the most glorious <laughs> moments we have had in some time. But you know, Connor actually we bring PK on and uh, yeah. hates the Bruins. He, admit, he admitted, self-admitted, said, you know what, yeah, I don't like talking about the Bruins because I hate them. Yeah, so that well, you he co- was a Montreal guy, so that's just a built-in hardcore rivalry to begin with, so Loser. I can understand that. And also, uh, I think he would get heckled pretty hard when he would go to Boston, so he's got some uh, well-deserved hate for Bruins faith. <laughs> well, and to be fair, PK, he, he was a slippery son of a bitch. PK play, played his own game. He played sometimes dirty, some people would say. Sometimes, no. sometimes he played a little soft. He would he would flop, people would say. No. And, and you could you know make your own decisions on whether he was flopping or not check the tape. He flopped every single time. That's games. Well, they they started calling him PK Slewban because he wouldn't mind giving the old oh. little slew foot behind guys' legs. Which, hey man, all's fair in love and war. <laughs> <laughs> oh, slew foot. You ever see? You ever see the slew foot? I don't. It's th- a bit of a gre. It's a greasy play. <laughs> It's a greasy. Ask him why they call him PK Slewban next yeah. time he comes on. All right, we're gonna call him right now. We'll, we'll see yeah. why they call him. It, it, am I kicking the right heel into the left, or what's happening there? It doesn't matter what side you're on, but you know, the minute you tap the back of the boot in a, in, with a with a hockey skate on, the guy's going ass over tea kettle. So <laughs> that's people started accusing him of doing a little bit too much of that later in his career, in a way to maybe keep up and 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 pin in these young guys. But hey. Don't they don't kill the messenger here. That's no, what they were no, it's just PK Slewban. Yeah. Yeah. That's classic Slewban hockey. You know, let's go to the West. Obviously, we had a very uh very civil conversation there about sure. the East. What do you think about the West, Biz? So I'm actually really liking Edmonton right now, just based on that first round matchup. Uh I think that well, they played LA the last two years and and gave it to them. Um, Dallas was my favorite probably coming in, but Uh-oh. all of a sudden now they're Uh-oh. matched up against the Golden Knights, the mm. cap circumcisers, as I like to call them. That's because right. They put all these guys on the long-term IR, then which you're allowed to add salary, so they go make all these awesome trades. They end up bringing in Noah Hannafin, Thomas Hurdle, and then all of a sudden the minute game one hits, all their guys are healthy again. Well, Tampa did matter. this. Let's not Sorry, just judge cheaters. the Golden Knights, Sorry, pal. Cheaters. There's a lot of work. This is gamesmanship, That's just right, like yeah. Slew Band. Yeah. Sounds like cheat. Just like Slew Band. <laughs> Trying to win. I, I actually 
personally don't care. I'm just calling it out for what it is. I think Good that their their GM and their president, their GM and president are like the pinky in the brain. They're <laughs> they're like Ryan Smith. They're a few steps ahead, and they've been known to be cutthroat individuals. They're they're not exactly loyal. They care about winning. They care about now, and they want to add rings to their finger. And that's why they're cap circumcisers. They will do anything it takes to win. And now all of a sudden, as the eight seed. And defending Stanley Cup champions, they're going against the Western Conference champs in the Dallas Stars, who, in my opinion, are the the best built team probably in all of playoffs. They have Ottinger, unbelievable goaltender. They have great defense who are mobile, big, and solid. They have two first lines. And then they also got two guys uh, on entry-level contracts, uh, Wyatt Johnson and this Stankhoven. We call him Stanky Leg. You do the Stanky Leg. Yeah. These guys are buzzing out there on the third line. So they're a well-oiled machine. And if gun to my head, I would have to pick the Dallas Stars uh, to take it all down. Okay, yeah. the, the West or the whole thing? Uh, the West. And on the East, like I said, I'm going to be a homer. I'm going to go with my Leafs, but outside of picking my So Toronto the Leafs, Leafs go, ahead. go ahead. Yeah. My my dark horse uh, would be the Carolina Hurricanes. Small market team, yeah, but they made a few big pickups at the deadline. They play man-on-man defense, and they are just, uh, once again, a well-oiled machine of the East. Yeah, Gensel is a weapon. I can't believe you left Pittsburgh. That's not good news. Shout out to the uh, Fenway Gullis. Sports Group. Yeah, sure. that's great. Um, Get Crosby it's out. funny you like Toronto uh, because in the first round, they're taking on a team that has a guy who has three cups. That's right. And you want to talk about a big rig who's going to get bodied, is what Biz said. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Patty Maroon. Boom! Yeah. 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 What's up, boy? Hello, Mr. Patty Maroon. Hey. What's up, Biz? Hey, uh, Patty. You I, tell me. No, no. <laughs> tell him, Maroon. Yeah, Patty, tell me what's tell up. Tell him, big rig. Patty, there's no way you heard this. There's no way you heard this because you're in the middle of uh, actual run here and life and everything. Uh, Boston Connor and Biz just got into quite a dispute about, I believe the, the ending comment from Biz was, Patty Maroon will get dummied by Ryan Reeves. That's what he said. I believe that is what he said. And that's the- sugarcoating it, too. <laughs> Listen to this He's going to your eyes shut. He's going to give you so many rights, you're begging for a left. How Patty about Maroon. It? Is that true, Patty? I'm just trying to do journalism here. Is that true? <laughs> and why, why is Biz saying this? I thought we were all on the same side here. Well, Biz is a Leafs fan. That's why. Yeah. And the only reason Biz is saying that is because Ryan Reeves pumped his eyes shut, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think... Uh, <laughs> we all know Reese is a tough guy, but whatever. It's about showing up, eh? Boom. That's all it is. It's How about showing up and getting in the action. How do you feel, Patty? How's the body? How's life? I feel good. Ready for another run here. We have obviously a, another challenge ahead of us with Toronto. They're a good hockey team, so I'm looking forward to it, especially playing for Boston, original six team. Oh boys, yeah. you gotta do what you gotta do, boys. Uh, Connor has uh, one last speech to give to you, Patty, because I'll tell yeah. you what, he got pretty fired up about what Biz was saying earlier. Yeah, look, Big Rick, I, I know you weren't there, you know, last year, but but what this team means to Boston, I, I can't put into words. To be completely honest with you, and to say that the city needs this would be an understatement. I, I think the city is is living and dying with this Boston Bruins team and getting you to join the squad. And as the camera zooms out, you can see that pasta jersey. It doesn't yeah. say Pasternak; it says pasta. Because that's what we're going to need this this offseason. Because unfortunately, last playoffs we had to hang that banner as a uh, memorial mm-hmm. to the uh, great season, the record-setting season last year that fell oh so short in the first round. And I don't think the city of Boston can handle that right now, Big Rig. So we're going to need you to you know maybe beat the shit out of ten to fifteen Maple Leafs a night. Uh, I mean, you can, <laughs> you can get what you can get. How, how many minutes are there in a game? 60. So you can get 12 game misconducts. You can get 12 <laughs> majors for fighting in one game. I, yep. I believe that's that, good math. That yep. math. That math. He won't even up. be seeing the ice. Oh, he, can't even bend his, no! he can't even bend his knees anymore. You skate like me. <laughs> no! you're, doing the, you're, doing, you're doing the chopstick dance out there on the fourth line. You can't even get in on the fourth line. You're listening to this grocery t- stick over here. Hey, hey, and, you, hey, and you tell that midget Marshawn to keep no! his car. You tell that midget no! Marshawn. Oh, to keep it. his paws off my boy Marner. Get all right? It. And if you even think about going next to Pablo on the ice, you better reconsider it, buddy, because I will come and find you <laughs> on the streets of Boston, and I will handle the business myself. All right. Kick hey. his ass. Ben, go, what was the go. closest thing you came to a playoff game? 
I played in a playoff <laughs> game. You <laughs> <guys> <laughs> <got> <laughs> guys in a playoff game? I played one second against the Chicago Blackhawks. <laughs> got to make it, my strap on on. Way to go, Vince. It, I, I forgot to do my tie down, and I fought Brandon Bull League, and my jersey came up, and then I got the gate. I played one second. <laughs> one second. I got proof. I got the – Pat, hey, hey, Pat McAfee. Good thing you came out of the, the game, game early. Sheet. You're doing a Bring good job. Bring the game sheet and show them I played a second in a playoff game. All right, we believe you. How about that? We just believe that it happened, mm. and that was the greatest one second they said in the history of playoff yeah. hockey. Yeah. Yep. Patty, That's what, what I'm what, saying. What we would like to say is uh, thank you to you and the boys and the rest of the NHL for what's about to be an electrifying playoffs. You're the man. Cheers, brother. Hey, thanks, boys. Thanks for having me. Don't listen to Biz. Never. 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 Don't worry the about that. The first in the league. Okay, jeez. Ladies and Patty Maroon. Yeah, big